Which is the best Japanese supercar on sale today? Is it the Nissan GTR Nismo or the Honda NSX? Analog versus digital. This is old school. It's a little bit like going to the pub and chatting someone up. You know, like, do you have any English in you? Would you like some? Sorry, whereas this is a bit like going on Tinder and just swiping right, swipe right, swipe right on everyone. The more the merrier. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buying a new car? Then head to Car Wow and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. Car Wow, your one stop car buying comparison site. Let's start off this video by talking about the price. So the Nissan GTR Nismo starts from £180,000, whereas the Honda NSX is a relative bargain because it starts from £150,000. However, when you spec it to be the same as the GTR, then they come out as the same price. So this one is £180,000 because it's got extras on it like the carbon fibre pack, you've got carbon fibre in the engine bay, you've got the upgraded carbon ceramic brakes, which you get as standard on the GTR. All adds to the price, you see. Now this will be the part of the video where I go click up there to go and buy a new car through Carwow and you're probably not actually in the market for a new car. But we've got a new service through Carwow which is amazing. If you're thinking about selling your car, you can actually upload the details of your car, send in some pictures and you'll get great offers back on your car from our trusted dealers and you can choose which, if any of them, you want to sell your car through. They'll even come and pick it up. Stay good. Click on the pop-out banner to check that out. Alternatively, after the video, just Google Help Me Car Wow and you can check out that service as well as the usual new car buying schemes that we offer. Now let's compare these cars to designs and they look so different, don't they? So this is a classic supercar shape, very low. It's got a kind of like a smiley face. It's a bit insect-like, especially in this orange paint, which is extra, by the way, but it works really well. Do like the number plate they've got in this car, NSX999, which if you're not from the UK, that's the number you call if you need the police. The GTR's number plate's pretty cool as well. G3, grrr, and it really has got a grrr about it. It's like an angry fish, like it would just bully you out of the way. Which looks best from the front? Oh, it's so different, but I think I prefer the GTR ever so slightly, just because it's so, so in your face. This is pure supercar, low slung, mid matted engine. Whereas this is, it's a GTR, isn't it? Now you can get a GTR from £80,000, whereas this one is £180,000. Yes, it's got all the carbon fibre bits on it and the extra bits and pieces, but it is still a GTR. Can't fault it for fake vents though. Real vents, real vents. Show me about the cheap plastic badging there. Carbon fibre roof, carbon fibre side skirts, 20 inch alloys all round, carbon fibre rear wing. Now, it does look like this wing is on backwards. Can you see that? All the vents on the NSX there real as well because it's got so many radiators. How many radiators, Lawrence? Ten. Ten radiators apparently on this. Insane. So it's got 20 inch alloy wheels at the back, 19s at the front. Oh, it's sleek and a carbon roof. Very sleek looking car. They both have a bit of a problem with their doors, right? This is something very common to both of them. So this is a bit of a faff to open the GTR's door like that. But it's not quite as much of a faff as it is to open the door on the NSX. So you've got to get your fingernail under there to pop that out. And I've just done my fingernail. Brilliant. You Comparing both these cars' arses, you would think that the Nismo was way heavier than the NSX. It's not though. This weighs in at 1,703 kilos, which means it's no lightweight. But it's still lighter than this because this is 1,759 kilos. It's because of all the batteries and motors and hybrid tech on it, you see, adds weight. Interestingly though, while they look very different, they both have quad tailpipes. Hard to spot them here on the NSX, but yes, they're down here and you can put three fingers in them, three fingers in each pipe. Whereas with the GTR Nismo, it'll take a whole fist, look, you can fist it. Sorry. Now let's compare the car's chassis. So the NSX has an aluminium space frame, but it has a carbon fibre floor for added stiffness. Also, you've got your engine mid-mounted. That drives the rear wheels, and it has a nine-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox, plus a limited slip differential across the rear axle. You've then got two electric motors at the front, one for each wheel, and you get torque vectoring so that they can control the amount of power going to each wheel. You've also got electric power steering and two-stage adaptive dampers as standard. Meanwhile, the GTR has three stage adaptive dampers as standard. How's that for one-upmanship? It's also got hydraulically assisted power steering for that old school feel. The chassis itself is a monocoque steel. The engine is mounted at the front, and then they've got this weird quirky way of 
doing the four-wheel drive system. So you've got a rear transaxle. However, when you launch the car, that setup does mean that all the power goes to the rear, 100% to the rear, so you get a good launch. Now, I'll actually launch this. What the heck is that? Sounds like the world is coming to an end. Maybe Godzilla is heading our way. <laughs> So you've got that four-wheel drive system at the back you've got a limited slip differential whereas at the front it does that thing where it'll break the front wheels to try and do torque vectoring by braking sort of thing it's not that effective but it sort of tries to work anyhow let's compare how these cars actually drive by driving them on a twisty mountain road so straight away this thing feels like an absolute monster the steering you notice it you go over bumps it kicks back to you through the steering wheel because you've got hydraulic power steering old school style <laughs> i got the suspension in the medium setting the drivetrain in aggressive and the stability on because this will break traction it really will even though it's got loads of grip it's got loads of power as well whole car is busy though shaking wobbling telling you what's going on <laughs> and then in comes the power oh and this thing just flies. Everything is a sensory experience. It really is. The noise, the brake pedal feel, which is strong. The steering, whoa, and the grip. <laughs> this thing flies, absolutely flies, but you sort of manhandle it around. You really have to wrestle it. <laughs> oh, it's not called Godzilla for nothing. It's gonna be interesting to see how that NSX compares because this, oh, you get a bit of a workout when you're driving this thing fast. Let me just tell you that much. Jumping out of that GTR into this NSX, it just feels so very different. It's got a slightly artificial sound to the engine note. It's so much smoother over bumps, so much more relaxed and refined and easier probably to go quicker straight away. The way it's sitting with those bumps is impressive and the steering's not fighting back at you. But at the same time, it doesn't have quite the feel or the urgency of that in the GTR. Despite all its digital features, you can't really tell that it's doing clever stuff with its electric motors. It just seems to hook up and get you down the road. It feels natural, it really does. They've done a great job on it. And even though it's slightly heavier than the GTR, it actually feels a little bit lighter is it such an experience? It's not as intense and it's confidence inspiring. The GTR you need big balls for, whereas you can drive this quick with little teeny balls that I reckon when you get into the groove of the GTR, it will ultimately be a little bit more rewarding. This GTR Nismo has a claim to fame. It has the biggest brakes ever fitted to a Japanese production car in the history of the world. world. So you've got carbon ceramics all around, 410 millimeter discs up front gripped by six piston calipers at the back 390 millimeter discs gripped by four piston calipers the honda nsx's brakes are a little bit smaller so as standard you get steel brakes and you have 368 millimeter discs at the front gripped by six piston calipers whereas at the back 360 millimeter discs gripped by four piston calipers but if you upgrade to these carbon ceramics then your diameter increases at the front to 381 millimeter discs and at the back it stays the same 360. So it's got slightly smaller brakes than the Nismo GTR, but will that have an effect on the braking performance? Let's find out. Right, let's see how good this NSX stops. So full emergency start from 70 miles an hour. Use my specialist timing gear to test it. See what distance it takes to stop. Here comes the line. Oh, is it regenning as well? Regenning, putting some energy into the battery while I'm braking. That's actually pretty blooming good. 41 meters. It's stopped from 17, 41 meters. Impressive. Right, now for the Nissan. Let's see if we can beat what the Honda did. Here we go. Here comes the braking zone. <laughs> what did we get? What did we get? Oh no, look, oh, sorry Nissan, 44 metres I'm afraid, looks like that's a victory for the Honda. Now let's compare these cars interiors and yeah, interiors on either this NSX's or the GTR strong point. So this is an interior like you might expect from a supercar from 10 years ago. It's a bit plasticky in places whereas other materials do feel 
quite nice and well made. I do love the seats though, they are super comfy and you sit nice and low. The steering wheel feels nice but the paddle shifters are cheap and plasticky. Hmm. Then there's this general layout, it's a bit odd and the infotainment system, oh it leaves a lot to be desired this Honda infotainment system. You don't even get satellite navigation as standard. Then there's the digital dials which are okay but they're starting to look a little bit dated and some of the graphics are a bit childish for a car at this price. Wait till you see the launch control icon, it's just... Ugh. It's embarrassing. You'll see it soon when I launch the cars. And check this out, the cup holder solution. This. Yeah, brilliant Honda, brilliant. If the Honda's interior feels a decade old, then this feels almost two decades old. I mean, have a look at this. Just have a look at it. There's no digital dials here. Well, there is a little digital display with a bit of information, but it looks like they've just stolen that from an old original Game Boy. Quality isn't quite as nice either as the Honda, this leather rail on here and here. Though I do like the Alcantara on the dash of the Nismo, which I probably just dirtied with my greasy, sweaty, sun cream ridden hands. Like the seats, they're not quite as comfy as the ones in the Honda, but they are more body hugging. You've got carbon fibre about the place. Plus, look! Cup holders and little door pockets. You don't get door pockets in that NSX, so that's better. It's got cheap feeling paddle shifters yet again, like the Honda though. And this, this is the thing that I hate about this car. You need to use two levers to adjust the steering wheel. You almost break your thumbs trying to undo them. Look, so that's the up and down one. Now I need to release another one for the in and outy one. Look. Hmm. At least the infotainment system isn't as bad as the NSX is. I mean, it's not the very latest in modern technology but it's just easier to use than the Hondas but that's not saying much really. The time has come to compare these cars engines so they're both hand built in Japan. Yes this is a hybrid <laughs> which means that you think you've actually turned it off when you haven't and occasionally it will kick in the engine to start the cooling system or whatever. Yeah thank you very much. You've got a 3.5 litre twin turbo V6 mated to an electric motor which drives the rear wheels. Then you've got two electric motors at the front and combined you have 581 horsepower and 645 newton metres of torque. Moving on to the GTR. So that has a 3.8 litre twin turbo V6, puts out 600 horsepower and 650 newton metres of torque. There's nothing else to say about that because it's much simpler than the system in that car. Let's do it, let's launch them. Honda says the NSX will do 0 to 60 in under three seconds. That's all they say, but will it? For all the throttle, launch mode, here we go. Oh, 3.29. What's the quarter mile? 12.02. Now the card isn't weird there, it like backed out of the power. So it was fine to 60, but then the quarter mile was slower than it should have been otherwise, because it backed out the power. So I went, eh? odd. It's a Honda, it's supposed to be super reliable. What's going on with this? Let's do it. Launch, go. Oh, slightly better than 60, 3.26, did it again. Didn't like it at all. 11.84 for the quarter mile, still not delivering the full goods. Tell you the truth, I have launched this car and got a clean run in it the other day. It did an 11.2. It's the best I had out of it, and quite a few runs at it as well. But today, it's not quite there, is it? Okay, now I'm going to launch Godzilla. So Nissan says this GT on Nismo will do not 60 in 2.5 seconds. Launch mode. Feels quicker than the Honda, but not by much. 3.19 to 60, what's the quarter mile going to be? 11.28. Which is the best time I've had exactly out of the NSX, but it's not the best time I've had out of a Nissan GTR Nismo. Therefore, I think it's only right for me to do it again. Launch time. That feels a bit better. Come on, what are we going to do? 3.01, I'll take that. Should have a better quarter mile time. 11.05, not bad. Beat the Honda, beat the best I've had out of the Honda. They're the best I've had out of GTR Nismo, 10.8.
So if we can play that game, it's only fair to mention that as well. This Nissan is the quicker of the two cars. Fact. Now let's move on to what these cars would be like to live with every day, starting with practicality, something that really the NSX isn't. This boot, it's only got a capacity of 110 litres. The Nissan is three times the size, 315 litres. Now I do like the fact that it's carbon fibre there. Now this does have carbon fibre here on the engine cover, though that's optional and that's standard. So it's also standard in the Nissan, rear seats. Now they're not really particularly big rear seats, but you can just about squeeze someone in there if you hate them. At some point, you're probably going to want to drive your GTR up the motorway, maybe even daily it. How does it cope? Well, cruising at 70, it's not the quietest thing. It's not unbearable, but you do get a bit of road noise, a bit of wind noise. One thing you can't complain about though is the performance. So I'm just cruising 70. Now I'm on a close track, so I can floor it now. And we'll see what happens. Watch this. Gearbox takes a second and then off we go. Off we go. And boy, does it pull. It pulls, 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 pulls for days. It really does. I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to do it from slower. So here we go, 40 miles an hour, cruising along, watch this. This is the car in comfort mode, flooring it. Takes a while for the gearbox to decide what he wants to do. You can feel it just changing down, then off we go again. Absolutely flying. What I'm going to do is show you the third gear roll on from 50. Right, just to show you the torque of this engine. So here we go, I'm flooring it. Look at that, look at the speed just build. Wow. Godzilla is quick. Quick, 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 quick. Woo! <laughs> it's livable and it's got the performance. Is this NSX better as a daily than the GTR? Well, I'll tell you what, on the motorway, it's definitely more relaxing. But the key thing is the suspension. It's just glidey. I've got the car in sport mode, so it's got its suspension in the softest setting. Actually, I could put it into Sports Plus where it stiffens up. It's still not as bouncy as the GTR in its comfiest setting, but I'm gonna go back into the softer setting. And it is, it's, it's just relaxing. Then there's the response. So I'm gonna put my foot down now. Oh, change gears quicker then than the GTR did when you're just cruising along. Plus you got filling from the electric motors just while the turbo spools up. You've got a bit of punch from the electric motors just to help you along. Really is good this thing. It's so easy to drive. It really is an everyday supercar, this, absolutely. And the seats help, the seats are so comfy and cushioning. I could do mile after mile in this car. So then what's my final verdict? Well, I think that I'd actually prefer owning the NSX. It'd just be easier to live with, but I'd actually end up buying the Nissan GTR just because it's just got a little bit more personality. It's more of an event to drive and that's what you want out of a supercar. And as we progress through the digital age, this will start to feel a little bit old hat with its hybrid system. Whereas this will be refreshingly archaic with its just simple mechanical analog internal combustion engine setup. I love it. And that's why it wins this test. I hope you'll 